And a very, very good day to you as always. And welcome to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network's Market Fresh Hour. We're about midway through the show here. I'm your host, Randall White, and it is 33 minutes past the hour. Uh, Great to have you joining us here for our weekly get-together where we discuss all things about locally grown and produced food and beverages here in California that makes our state such an amazing place to live. That is for sure. You know, if you ever miss a week or just want to rehear a segment, you can find all of the information you need online at eatdrinkexplore.com. And then we do produce a video simulcast version of each segment that we, right after the show, put into our Ustream feed. And uh, so if you ever want to sort of watch the radio show, I guess, <laughs> radio uh, radio. Television for radio, uh, you just have to go to our YouTube channel. You know, you can go to our Facebook and Twitter channels, too. It's all the same. It's uh, whatever the specific, you know, social media is, forward slash eat, drink, explore. It's that easy. This portion of Eat, Drink, Explore's Market Fresh Hour is brought to you by Sidecar Restaurant in downtown San Luis Obispo. That's on Broad between Higuera and Marsh Streets, right in the heart of the historic district. Now is the time to book your tickets to Sidecar's big Roaring Twenties New Year's Eve bash. I was just in there the other night, just a couple of nights ago, and uh, there were people coming in and booking theirs, and I think they're running out of space. In fact, I'm worried about my own slot (laughs) because I haven't uh, haven't booked mine yet, but uh, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Champagne toast, party party punch, and lots of other extras all included in the price. And I've checked some of the prices downtown for the uh, various parties, and uh, this one is the least expensive I've seen. It's $60 a person, and it should be a great time. And as you know, the food at Sidecar, always local, sustainable, fresh, and in season. Find Sidecar Restaurant online at SidecarSLO.com and let them know you heard about their great restaurant, right here on Market Fresh. For this segment today, we are taking a closer look at the word natural. How many times have you been shopping, comparing items? I'm a big, like, it takes me forever to get through the grocery store. <laughs> so I'm looking at the ingredients list and, you know, uh, one big thing I do is like look where it's made. Uh, and I always try to get it as close to home as possible. Uh, Well, what if one of the packages says all natural ingredients or 100% natural in big, bold type? Does that make a difference to you in choosing which item to purchase? As educated as I am on this topic, it does for me. If there's two packages and both are totally equal, you know, uh, in organic ingredients, they're both made here in California. Uh, They don't contain, you know, some of the ingredients I try to avoid. And then one of the packages says 100% natural. I don't know why I just tend to sway that direction. Well, here to help us understand whether it should or not, if I'm just making a foolish uh, choice in that direction, is Amanda Howell. She is a staff attorney with our friends at Center for Science in the Public Interest. We've had them on the show before and just always terrific information. Uh, they're always working for our best interest. You can find them online at CS. PINet.org. Amanda, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Randall. Nice to have you here. And Amanda warned me prior to uh, coming on the show that uh, she does have her puppy in the uh, office with her. So if we hear some barking in the background, that is not a problem. We are a 100% dog friendly show. So <laughs> I have a couple of. Glad to hear it. I have a couple of dogs that are. Well, they're sleeping next to me right now. But if a UPS truck pulls out in front, who knows what happens? So <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah. So, uh, Amanda, let's talk natural. Now, as I understand it, the word has zero teeth. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you are companies are hoping that you and all the other consumers out there assume certain things about natural. Um, yeah. They're assuming that you import your own understanding. You assume things that you know may be healthier or eco friendly or, or minimally processed or you know, a number of things. Um, Unfortunately for consumers, uh, natural has absolutely no formal definition from the FDA. Which is amazing. The the dictionary, uh, I just pulled it up here, uh, 
terms it as an adjective, which is, uh, I guess, how this is always used on packaging, is existing in or caused by nature, not made or caused by humankind. Now, that is the dictionary definition, but that is not the definition that uh, could be taken to court if you, you know, were to call out some of these producers for using this label, correct? Exactly. Um, since FDA hasn't defined it, it can mean whatever the company wants it to mean. It can mean absolutely nothing. It, yeah. it can have their own definition, maybe on an asterisk, asterisk on the side of the package, but we all know how few consumers turn packages around and read fine print. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sort of an oddity that way. <laughs> <laughs> but So uh, they could just say, well, we meant it's 100% natural that you would want to buy this product. Right. I mean, I haven't heard anything that ridiculous, <laughs> but something we will often hear is, oh, well, it did come from nature. It's made from, let's say, corn or grapes. But, you know, they're skipping that. Oh, well, then we took it to a lab and yeah. put it through some highly processed <laughs> uh, processes here. And it, every, when you think about it, everything is from nature. Right. <laughs> so, it, no, you know. that's true. And uh, where this could really get sort of hazy is in the whole GMO range, uh, because you could say, well, the, uh, this crop naturally grew from seed up from the ground. It was, it's 100% natural, but, but as we all know, right, the DNA right. of that plant is not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so where do you, well, yeah, where do you go? The important thing to remember here is it's not even what consumers or companies say is natural. What we think FDA should be considering is what do consumers think of as natural? Do oh, good. Think yeah. Think GMO ingredients are natural. That that should be FDA's focus. Otherwise, we're going to get bogged down with lawyers and the scientists. So, and Amanda, that's exactly products. what I'm sorry. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. What um what is the push? What is Center for the Science? What is Center for Science and the Public Interest doing to persuade the FDA to make some sort of decision on this? Is uh, do you have do you have uh, uh, some guidelines that you say this is what we'd like to see? Well, CSPI has petitioned FDA in the past, um, not recent past, back in 2006, that we'd like to see them define natural similarly to the USDA's informal uh, definition of natural, basically saying things that aren't highly processed, things you could, processes that you could do in your own kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, um, steaming things, right. uh, smoking things maybe, things like that. But um, right now, I, I work in the litigation group, and we, right now, unfortunately, the only really way to try and get uh, the to enforce uh some you know to avoid consumer deception here is, is through the judicial system so that's what yeah. we're doing right now um we've got some cases uh for companies saying things are natural when they contain uh high maltose corn syrup maltodextrin things like that that are very clearly highly processed right and so those are actually going to court right now so so perhaps it will never be the FDA that comes up with this decision. It'll be something decided by a judge somewhere. Well, we at CSPI and I think companies and consumers have all said we'd all really like to see FDA uh, come up with a definition. Um, yeah. And courts have turned to the FDA saying, hey, are, are you going to define this? Mm -hmm. And FD, FDA repeatedly has said, no, 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 thank you. Uh, they cite... Uh, limited resources and the complexity of the issue for why they have declined to define natural. Um, I think in the end, what's going to happen, if it does get defined by FDA, it's going to be um, the interested parties, the stakeholders, the in industry and consumers and consumer advocates like CSPI coming together, forming a definition we can all agree on and, and handing that to the FDA. Amanda, you're that an attorney. You're an attorney, and I, I've only taken, like, you know, in college 30 years ago, a business law class, <laughs> you know, uh, so my my knowledge of the law is extremely limited. But if I remember correctly, there's some sort of legal term that has to do with when the public at large overwhelmingly agrees that a certain thing is, you know, that uh, like the term natural means this, then even though it hasn't been defined, there's like a different sort of law that steps in. Do I have that at all correct? You know, um, <laughs> as, far, as far as FDA regulations, I'm not sure that that's something I've heard of before. No? Okay. Um, that's what I was hoping yeah. in my head. I was sort of hoping, well... <laughs> 
<laughs> if uh, if everyone sort of agrees on it, then couldn't you take it to court and say, hey, everyone thinks natural is this. So, uh, you know, then a judge would rule and say, yeah, everyone thinks natural is this. So you're uh, lying by putting the natural on there. So if so if the FDA were to let's just say that tomorrow the FDA were to announce the way they did with the antibiotics a couple of weeks ago, that uh, they were now going to make this a voluntary effort. And uh, you as producers, if you use the term natural, uh, we'd really prefer that you follow this definition. It would really affect a large number of products, right? This word is thrown around a lot. It is. It is. Um, but what I think is that the industry would be glad for a, a single definition because they have seen a lot of litigation about natural claims because, again, it is thrown around a lot and a lot of products that are consumers don't see as natural. Yeah. You know, have that 100% natural slogan. So I think increasingly we're seeing industry step away from the term natural, and and I think industry would be happy for FDA to come up with a definition. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that probably shouldn't be a voluntary effort because, you know, then how would a consumer know if something – said natural and it was FDA's definition, the one they're familiar with, or yeah. it was, again, nothing. And we should remember that the term organic indeed does have teeth. So if you really want something exactly. to be natural, uh, look for that term. Amanda Howell, exactly. CSPI staff attorney. Thanks for joining us today. Great information. Thank you so much, Randall. Take care. All right, everyone, stick around because uh, just after the break, we're taking a look at some small ag plots that are becoming available for your business here on the Central Coast.